Hi, in this video, I'm going to talk about why stock price prediction models do not work in practice. Uh, you might have heard about quantitative uh, modeling to predict uh, stock prices. Uh, these models do not work many a times and you should not believe in them blindly. So I'll talk about why uh, that is the case. First thing is that um, it is well known that the part performance of stock uh, is not an indicator for the future success of the stock. And we have seen that many times over the last 100 years in the history of capital market. Uh, so in stock market, history may not repeat. For example, in 20, 30 years back, a lot of these you know, these big manufacturing companies uh, were doing really well in, in uh, US but not any longer. You see the top most performing stocks are now the tech, talk, tech stocks, right? So things have changed a lot. So do not always believe that the past performance of a given stock will repeat in future. And you take the historical data to build prediction model. So uh, that's the problem, right? The historical data will not uh, help you predict future many times. It does help you sometimes, but uh, uh, not always, especially when it comes to predicting stock prices. Um, and most stock price, uh, most stock forecast models are univariate time series models. And these are not good models to forecast uh, long-term um, performance of a given stock. These are okay to forecast for the near terms, like a couple of months, that's fine probably works to some extent, but not for a year or a couple of years uh, into the future. That's a bit difficult for the univariate time series uh, models. And uh, most of these models that, you know, people use to forecast uh, prices are the univariate time series models. Even the machine learning models are not that great. Um, well, there is a lot of uh, brouhaha going on. Uh, for the machine learning models and the success. Well, these models are extremely successful in many other fields, but not so much in uh, finance uh, or in investment. Um, so the underlying principle of uh, machine learning models is to minimize the loss rate. And that's not always helpful when it comes to uh, predicting stock prices, which is more of a time series data. So uh, that does not always help. Um, so there is no evidence that machine learning models outperform the traditional statistical model uh, in the uh, financial forecasting. Um, otherwise, you know, most uh, machine learning scientists would all, uh, already be so rich, but that hasn't happened yet. In fact, you won't find many uh, top machine learning scientists working uh, in the field of finance. They are mostly in the tech or in e-commerce uh, or in, uh, you know, um, in automobile like Tesla, no? but they're not into uh, you know these big hedge funds or big investment platforms. And those who actually made a move uh, were very unsuccessful. Okay, there are many stories on the internet. You can read about them. The AI gurus were are not that successful in the financial uh, yeah in the financial or investment world. All right. So quant models do not usually take into account expert opinion. That's another big weakness. Right. So finance is not just a science where you uh, build models and okay, live and then, you know, just sleep and the model will work. Uh, you, know, you don't have to really understand the market yourself. That's not the case in finance. In finance, you have to understand the market. You have to be an expert in order to sort of supplement, um, uh, provide supplementary knowledge to the model. And only then the model will work better. Most models, most quant models, uh, do not take into account any expert opinion. That's a huge weakness. And in the financial forecasting world, that's uh, not going to work very well. Uh, why is that so? Because not all information reflecting the available data. First of all, in the financial world, you do not really have enough data. You need a lots and lots of data to do proper forecasting in finance and you do not really have access to all, all those data. And whatever data you have access to, the entire information about that particular stock, uh, you know, not does not really uh, reflect in the, the data available to us. 
So that's another problem. So expert opinion is so important. Um, and the thing is, uh, these models, the quantitative uh, models, they fail to identify the stock which will disrupt. If a given stock uh, or a given company will disrupt the entire market for in the next 10 years, right? But it hasn't done it yet, but maybe in a couple of years time it will do. There is no way uh, a quantitative model can predict that, okay? Because it hasn't already done it in past. So without any historical evidence, it cannot really do that, right? It'd be difficult to do that. Well, people are trying to sort of find some pattern, but you know, probably there's no pattern, right? If there's no pattern, nothing will help, no matter how wonderful your model is. Um, and then innovation is often overlooked. Well, the companies who are very innovative, so they're not doing well uh, right now, but they will do really, really well in future, especially because they're investing a lot uh, into developing very innovative product and services. So uh, the financial forecasting model often overlook that, right? So it's the stock price discussion is not about uh, the demand and supply. Uh, normally, people think that okay, price is just about demand and supply, and that's how you uh, that's how you can predict uh, the price uh, just by understanding what is the demand and what is the supply. That's not the case actually in uh, in, in the uh, stock market, where it is a lot more complicated. Okay, it all depends on the valuation of the given company whether it will do well in the future. So it, there's a lot of qualitative analysis uh, that goes into it. You know, I highly recommend you watching one, you know, some the, one very famous channel by Professor Aswad Damadaran, who actually always says that, you know, uh, a lot depends on the storytelling. It's not just quant that uh, helps. Although quant does help, uh, there's no doubt about that. But problem is that many times uh, these models are misused wrongly used and people who actually invest money into the quant funds they do not really understand how these models work and uh, you know the people from this company actually oversell these models that's the problem so here is uh, a, a, an example so this is the stock price of tesla so you have stock price from 2015 um, onwards up until 20 q3 2020 right um, you see the you know the stock price remained quite stagnant for three years and all of a sudden it showed up right what is that uh, what is the reason can you build a model which which will predict such a such a pattern it's practically impossible right so uh, and this is upward trend it could also be a downward trend right you can also see some of the oil companies are doing terrible now in the stock market I think Exxon Mobil is one such case where you see a down on trend. But here is, so it's very difficult, right? If you use a time series data from 2015 to 2018 to, you know, predict, um, um, you know, stock price for Tesla for the next one or two years, you know, the price would be even less than $200, uh, but it has gone up well over 600 now. So that's uh, one big difference between you know, having some qualitative aspect to modeling and simply with, you know, just using data for modeling purpose doesn't help, especially in some sectors uh, like tech. Uh, in manufacturing and all, I think disrupting is a bit difficult. Speculations are less, but in tech, it is a lot more. Um, and then most models do, uh, what they do is that they do, uh, they forecast the mean, mean of the price. But in stock, uh, in, in the financial forecasting, what matters also is the forecasting of the volatility, okay? Uh, volatility of the price or return. So, um, and stock price is normally extremely volatile, so it's very difficult to uh, predict that. So that's another weakness of such uh, models. Um, and then models cannot predict the extreme events or the black swan events. Uh, that uh, do not uh, take place very often, but when they take place, you lose a hell lot of money. 2008 uh, financial crisis was one such case when uh, people lost money, money uh, because that was an extreme event, which was very difficult to predict. 
now the current crisis because of the uh, coronavirus is um, is definitely a big crisis a big economic crisis but not a stock market crisis not a capital market crisis yet uh, and you see that uh, a lot of these stocks are now doing wonderfully well today in fact s&p uh, i think dow jones crossed 300000 uh, sorry 3000 um, so that's uh, for the first time um, so the stock market does really well uh, but what i'm trying to say here is that it's very difficult for these models to predict uh, the black swan events um, and investors who actually put in their money in these uh, funds that use quant models they do not really understand the return and trade off the risk return trade off and they end up losing a lot of money they may make a lot of money for a few years and in such events when you have black swan events they lose all of that all of that money that they have made and the total return is sometimes negative Okay, stock price movements many a times can be attributed to uh, irrational exuberance. It was a, it was a term used by uh, the Fed chief, ex-Fed chief, um, Alan Greenspan, who actually coined this. And he said that sometimes, you know, you have unfounded market optimism, which lacks a real foundation of fundamental valuation. That means there is nothing truth in it. There is no strong... Uh, reason why a given stock is doing well, but it is doing well, and you can't explain that. Okay, there's a wonderful book on irrational exuberance uh, uh, by an Yale economist. Uh, so you can also read that. It's a wonderful book. It's also about sometimes why you can't explain the optimism in the market, why certain stocks are doing well. Uh, quant models cannot predict this uh, you know this uh, uh, unfounded market optimism or irrational exuberance by the way this is about uh, uh, an optimism right but it could also happen the other way around where you have a downward slope where the stock market is also going down but for no reason right the reason is difficult to explain um, so quant models are not suitable to predict such pattern and you know one example uh, often cited uh, is the bitcoin you know bitcoin is doing well uh, it did really well for a couple of years then there was a uh, bad period but now it is again doing well right in the last few months what i've seen bitcoin is doing wonderfully well right now but what's the reason right uh, because it's it's uh, a cryptocurrency because there is no underlying asset assets it doesn't have an intrinsic value uh, it's just a number um, and uh, it's going up but no one understands why right so uh, quant models are again very bad uh, to either predict or even explain the reasons for increase or decrease and then uh, very importantly uh, oftentimes the quant researchers they are uh, they're uh, you know uh, flabbergasted by the models at their disposal but the problem is that they do not really care about data or care less about data because which is a very difficult one right so models are overrated data is underrated uh, people think that okay if they use very complicated sophisticated models then they can predict anything and everything but that's not true you need data you need more data which is the most difficult part uh, so fancy models do not necessarily help, but more data does help. Okay, and one such example is the, is the Renisa technology. Okay, uh, so the picture that you are seeing here is a mathematician, the founder of Renisa technology, Mr. Douglas Simon. So in one of his interview, I was watching. He was saying that you know, uh, I mean, first of all, let me give you an introduction of him. He is a billionaire hedge fund manager and uh, heavily relies on quantitative techniques for investment so he uh, uh, uses uh, all statistical machine learning models to uh, for investment purpose but according to him what is very important is to collect uh, good data from all kinds of sources models are somewhat less important algorithms are less important but what's more important is to have as much as data as possible which that is useful to you 
okay and that's the most difficult part so data is more important than just using some fresh in, fresh you know some fancy uh, ai models as such so the bottom line here is that uh, it's uh, difficult to believe uh, the quant models when it comes to uh, forecasting financial market indicators such as price or returns uh, what's very important therefore is to do your due diligence on other qualitative aspects such as uh, reading through the balance sheet of the company uh, understanding you know the the business of the com uh, the company understanding the sector in which the company is uh, uh, operating so all these things are also very very important and some quant funds have done well in the past but most have haven't done well right so if you are putting in your know, money so be careful try to understand this you know this more theoretical aspects of uh, or shortcomings of quant modeling quantitative modeling statistical research machine learning ai I and mean, these are fancy terms but these things do not really work when it comes to uh, stock uh, market well i one i one thing i remember that andrew wang right who is a famous uh, ai scientist who was saying that you know anything or everything can be automated he didn't really uh, talk much about the finance aspect but i i am sure he knows that in the field of finance these models um, and not that greatly successful at least there is no evidence uh, as of today that these models outperform significantly the more statistical models so maybe in other fields yes there's a lot of success but not in the field of finance